Okay, so first of all, Excel recently brought out seven new dynamic array formulas. The first formula is the filter formula. So I can use the filter formula to filter this range and I can filter it for the numbers that are less than 50 and close brackets and enter. And now it has filtered out the three rows in this range that have numbers less than 50. So that's this one here, this one here, and then this row here. The formula lives in the top cell here, but then it spills to fill the number of cells it needs, and those cells are then outlined in this blue rectangle. In all of the other cells, the formula is grayed out in the formula bar because the formula isn't actually in these cells. Now you can reference this array by clicking on the first cell and then putting a hashtag in and enter and it will copy the whole of the range for you. You can delete the whole of the range just by deleting the contents in the top cell. You can also copy the whole range by selecting the whole range and it will automatically put in the hashtag for you. And then you can reference any individual part of this range just as you would normally. Now, if there is already something inside one of the cells the formula wants to spill into, you will get a spill error. And this is telling you that it wants to spill into a cell which has something in it. So you just need to delete the contents of that cell in order to get it to work. Also, if you try and use the array formula to find something which isn't there, so say if I tried to filter for values less than 10, I would get a calculation error because it can't find any values less than 10. However, I can avoid this by using the if empty option, which will allow me to put something in instead if it can't find anything. I can also use this to filter words. So I can filter for names that are Ben and close brackets and enter. And it filters out the four people in this range who have the name Ben. Now the second formula is the sort formula and this is equals sort. And I can use this to sort this range then the sort index is the column that I want to use to sort it. So this would be column one and this is column two. So I'm using column two to sort using the numbers. Then the sort order, the sort order can either be one for ascending order or minus one for descending order. So I'm going to use ascending order. And then the by column option False is the default option and it's for sort by row. So if I have values in lots of different rows but all in the same column that I want to sort, that would be sort by row. True is for sort by column, which is what you need if you are sorting horizontally. So you have values all in the same row but in different columns, you need to sort by column. What I need in this case is false and then close brackets and enter. And it has now sorted all of the values in this range going from the smallest number to the largest number. If I change the sort order to minus one for descending order, it will go from the largest number to the smallest number. And I can also sort this using the names. So if I change the sort index to one, I'm now sorting the names in reverse alphabetical order going from Z to A. If I change this from descending order to ascending order, it will sort them in alphabetical order going from A to Z. 
Now the next formula is the sort by formula. This is similar to the sort formula, but has a couple of different features. So I can use the sort by formula to sort this range based on multiple criteria. So I can sort by the names and I can sort using the names in ascending order. Then I can sort by the numbers and I will also sort the numbers in ascending order and close brackets and enter. So what I'm doing here is I am initially sorting in alphabetical order from A to Z, then I'm sorting in numerical order. So I have all the bends at the top here then within the four bends, the numbers go from smallest to largest. And it is the same for the Williams down here. I'm going from smallest to largest. Now I can also use the sort by formula to sort an array based on criteria outside of that array. So I can sort these numbers here, but I can sort them based on the names in this range. And I'm going to sort in ascending order and then close brackets and enter. And you can see I end up with the same numbers here as I do here, but I don't actually need to show the names if I don't want to. I can just sort the numbers using the names outside the array. Now the next formula is the unique formula and this will allow you to find all of the unique values in a list. So I am going to type in unique, then I'm going to look at this list of names here and I am going to sort for the by column option. This is the same as it was in the sort formula. So the default is false, that's what you get if you don't select anything. And it's what you need if you are looking at values in lots of different rows, but all in the same column. Then if you are looking for unique values in a horizontal list, then those would be values in lots of different columns. So you are comparing by column. I need false in this case and close brackets and enter. And this will find me all of the names in this range, but it only finds one Ben, even though there are multiple Bens in this list, and it only finds one William, even though there are multiple Williams in this list. There is an alternative way of getting this to work, which is the occurs once feature. And if I select this for true, then it will remove Ben and William, because Ben and William both occur multiple times. And I am telling it that I only want to find the values that occur only once. So unique can be used in two different ways to find all of the values in a list, ignoring any duplicate values, or finding only the values in a list that occur once. The next formula is the sequence formula. So I'm going to type in equals sequence. Then for the rows, I'm going to put five. For the columns, I'm going to put two. For the star, I'm going to put zero. And for step, I'm going to put five and then close brackets and enter. And you can see the numbers are now going up in a sequence from zero to five to 10 to 15 and so on. So what I have here is five rows, so one, two, three, four, five. Then I have two columns, one, two columns, and I am starting at zero. You can see that there, I'm starting at zero, and then I'm going up in steps of five. So the number is increasing by five each time, from zero to five and from five to 10 and so on. The sequence formula can also be used by putting just one number inside the sequence formula. If you do this, then it will assume that you want to start at the number one and then increase by one each time until you get to the number that you put in the brackets. So in my case, it goes from one to five. An example of when you would use the sequence formula is if you were searching for the five largest numbers in this range, you could use the sequence formula as your k term. 
So I can put sequence in here and then five and close brackets and close brackets again and enter. And it has now found me the five largest numbers in this range. The next formula is the rand array formula, and this will give you random numbers. So if I type equals rand array, the rows and the columns work the same way as they do in the sequence formula. So I'm going to put five and then two. The minimum I'm going to have as 10, the maximum 100. And then for integer, I'm going to put true because I want integer numbers. And now I have 10 random numbers. I have five rows again, and also two columns again. Then the minimum number I can have is 10, and the maximum is 100. So it's given me random numbers that are between 10 and 100. And for integer, I have selected true because I want all of my numbers to be integers. I want them to all to be whole numbers. If I put false here for decimal, then they would all have a decimal place. And you can see that here. They now all have something random after the decimal place. I can also change the minimum and the maximum value. So say if I wanted all numbers between 0 and 10, you can see I now have random numbers between 0 and 10. Now the final formula is the single formula, and you will never use this formula. But dynamic arrays stop something called implicit intersection from working in Excel. So the single formula replaces implicit intersection. What happens now if I select a whole range is that that range will spill to fill the correct number of cells. But that is not what used to happen. If I put in the single formula and then select the range, what used to happen is that it would just show you one value, whatever value lined up with the range that you were selecting. So in this case, it's showing me Ben because Ben is in row three here and I have typed the formula into a cell in row three. Now, if I put dollar signs around this range by pressing F4, I can then drag this formula down and you can see that it copies the names in this range. So for example, Lisa lines up with Lisa in this list. And it's doing this, it's looking for the value that it's lining up with, or that's in the same row with it, or that intersects with it, which is why it's called implicit intersection. However, when I drag the formula down past my range, so I'm no longer intersecting with the range I selected, I get a value error because there's nothing for it to line up with. Like I said, you will never use the single formula, just like you never used implicit intersection, but it is important for Excel add-ins to work. Okay, so in this video, I have shown you Excel's seven new dynamic array formulas, and that is everything.